Um, good evening, uh, good evening, viewers out there, um, members of the Bini Empire Advancement League, and um, descendants of the Great Bini Empire. This is another edition of um, the Bini Empire Advancement League uh, conversation, and um, with me here is um, the president of the Bini Empire Advancement League, Mr. Dele Bello, and um, the Deputy President of the organization, uh, Ms. Na Noko Tawona. And I am um, Joe Osemudiame Maoli Oyuke, the Vice President um, of the Bini Empire Advancement League. And so we just want, today we'll be having um, a couple of discussions yeah. and we would um, focus on um, our brothers and sisters in um, in greater Accra region of Ghana, uh, the Gans. Uh, we, we want to talk about um, a couple of things that we think um, needs to be addressed. Uh, we want to talk about how we can um, help uh, an average Ghan um, be a better person. We want to talk about things that have affected um, the sociocultural and economic um, development of the Ghana people in Greater Accra. And so, um, Madam Deputy President would be um, talking to us. You know, she's a Ghana and um, from the Dowona family of um, Osu. And so, she's going to be uh, talking to us about you know a lot of things that have um, happened in the past, things that are happening. Um, things that um you know things steps that we could take to help better the lives of the Ghan people. Okay, so um in the in the, in the past week uh, we had um Madam um, Deputy President in the past week we had um the regional um, minister in charge of the Greater Accra region, you know, addressing the chiefs and elders of um, Garland in one of um, their meetings, and there was some sort of uh, expression of disappointment. I wouldn't use the word outburst. There was um, some sort of expression of disappointment from the minister, who actually, you know, took on the elders of the land, and he he made some very wavy allegations, you know, accusing some of them of, um, you know, giving out land. You know, just because of our V8 and all that. There's also been the issue, the issue of um, people, you know, elders selling lands, you know, and um, and all that. And really, we've had more people, you know, non non gas you know, come into, uh, you know, purchase this land. And there's been um, some sentiment in you know, amongst the youth saying that um, in the nearest future, um, guns are actually going to be tenants in their own land due to the way uh, the elders have been, you know, selling their land and all that. So um, you are a gun, Deputy President. What's, what's your take on this whole, um, you know, claims and counterclaims and all that? All right, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, I want to say a hello to um, the people of the Great Spinning Empire Advancement League. Oh, uh, the Ga and the Adangbe people are usually grouped as part of the Ga Dangbe ethno linguistic groups of Ghana, Berlin, Togo, and the rest. We mainly live in the greater Accra regions, but when, when somebody travels to Ghana, the, uh, sorry, Ghana, especially the greater Accra region, the language that is widely spoken is tree, which shouldn't be, be the case, because the Dangbe language should be widely spoken in the greater Accra region. And then there are factors that are attributed, factors that um, are, are, are that, that the factors including the sale of land. Um, you see, 
the, these lands are not even giving, they are not even rented, but these lands are sold to foreigners or outsiders, people who do not consider themselves as, as or do not identify themselves as, as having the same ethnicity background. You see, Ghana is a, is a nation state and we have similar backgrounds, even though there are other ethnic groups and we've agreed to be governed by a sovereign, a sovereign uh, government, but that shouldn't be the case because you see, not even a, 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 a um, hello? Hello, we can hello? hear you. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Sorry, Deputy Vice President, uh, De Deputy President, uh, we cannot see your, your picture or your video. So can you please connect us with the with video so that people can see your face, please? Yeah, I was, I was going to say that too. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello, Ma, are you, are you there? Okay, I believe she has a technical problem. So maybe she's going to rejoin us. Okay. Yeah, our PRO is also around now, I hope. Okay. okay. But I can't see him again. Maybe he's also having a network problem, but uh, we can continue on the, yes. Uh, the introduction, you know, uh, like our, Vice President said, uh, I am the president. My name is uh, Dele Belo, and uh, he is the vice president, Joe uh, Etiusa Maui Urukwe, and uh, our PROO is uh, the person of Mr. Joe Ewe Iyoha. And uh, we also have uh, our deputy uh, president, which is uh, uh, the, the person of uh, uh, princess is she's a princess, but she doesn't like to to be called a princess. So we call her Miss uh, Noko. Okay, Noko Rebecca or Noko Rebecca. So <laughs> to to put it right. So we are starting fresh again. Okay. Okay. Well, um, Miss President, you know. Yeah. Um, According to what Deputy President was saying before she went of um issue of um you know um it's been a sentiment amongst the, the Dangue people, you know, yes. about how um the, the Ghan language is um uh, you know is um disappearing, how um the lands uh, you know have been probably almost sold out, you know, and um there's this fear that um, the next generation would probably have nothing you know, to own or to, to show for. And um, there's also been, you know, this discussion of, of um, an average guy not wanting to be educated, not wanting to, you know, get some education. There's been the issue of, um, you know, um, how do I feel it now? Yeah, good evening, Mr. Piaro. You know, there's been the issue of um, having young, young um, girls, you know, getting pregnant. There's been the issue of um, the fathers not uh, being around and all that, you know. So um, the young people are really faced with a lot of challenges. And, um, you know, I wanted us to kind of spend some time discussing uh, those things and see how we can help and uh, you know improve the lives of our brothers in the greater Accra um, region you know so which is very very important because um anything that affects an average guy uh, definitely affects every um indigenous of um the Benin empire yeah, yes. so, so um i think um one of the greatest problems um, the Ghana people are having is education. I'm not talking about um, the ability to read and write, which is uh, just a part of it, but um, the sound education, education on their background, their history, their culture, and um, 
every other thing, you know, education, bordering on spirituality, um, on economics, on politics, and all that. You know, there's been uh, there's been this uh, this problem with the gas states. If it's not um, them fighting over land, it's the issue of fathers not being there. It's the issue of mothers not being there. It's the issue of kids who want to go to school or can't afford an, an, an education, you know. There's also the issue of um, killing pregnancy and, and, you know, and all that. So the, the Ghana people are plagued with a lot of um, issues. But there are a lot of also, there are also a lot of good stories, you know. Ghana's have produced um, very great uh, personalities in Ghana. Um, they're very accommodating, you know full of life and, and all that, you know. So while there there's a lot um, to be happy about, there's also just so much uh, um, reason for us um, to be a little bit apprehensive because the way the way things are going, especially in the greater Accra region, if um, these things are not needed in the board, it's going to um, constitute uh, a greater problem for the coming generation, you know. And one of those things um, is the absence of other figures. You know, when when a child is growing up and the father is not there, you know, the mother doesn't have the ability to, you know, fully take care and then mentor this kid because she has to go out, you know, to earn a living so that she can put food on the table. You know, and you go to places like Jamestown, Jamestown, Choco, you know, and all those places. And if you see the deplorable uh, condition in which the people are living, you know, it calls, it's, it's a call for concern. You know, I think presently um, the regional minister, Mr. Mr. Henry Kwasi, is actually, you know, doing a lot of, um, she's trying so much to kind of give Accra a new face. But one of the things that I have not seen is uh, the political solution to some of the things that are bedeviling um, the Ghana people. You know, um, yes, there's a free SHS, but again, we have not seen policies that, that tend to, you know, encourage this, um, these kids to want to go to school, you know. And another thing is that the Ghana people are sports loving people, you know. An average Ghana boy is a potential boxer, a footballer, and all that. And so what I would have expected was to see more government investment in the area of sports. Okay, well, the previous government had a um, Bokum uh, Banco sports arena. Uh, that's just infrastructure, the physical infrastructure. But we have not seen um, a policy drive from government that tends to bring in a lot of these kids, nurture them, create some sort of sports festival, that gives them the platform, you know, to showcase their talent and, and all that. So it's not really there, you know. And so you find that, that these kids are at the mercy of one, um, you know, man in some corner in the street and all that, you know. So that's the government. But as individuals too, there's, there's not been so much that has been done, you know. There's so much business opportunity in Accra. But the problem is uh, a lot of people do not seem to either know this or they are too scared to take the risk, you know. And one of the reasons why people are really scared to take the risk again is the issue of land. You get to buy a land and, you know, your land gets to be resold, you know, to somebody else. And, and there's the issue of land guard and all that, you know. So even if people want to buy land, you know, to build um, a social infrastructure that would harness the talents of these young kids. It's pretty difficult, it's pretty challenging, you know, to do that, you know, because of uh, this culture of land grabbing, yeah. you know. It's just, it's just the same experience we have in Benin City in Nigeria, you know. So it, it, it's, it, it's the same, you know. And um, just as this land grabbing issue is impeding development in Benin City, the same, the same is what we are experiencing in the greater Accra region, you know, because people um, cannot invest, you know, when they are scared 
you know, yeah. to acquire properties. And those who actually invest, invest for something else, you know. And so the, the average girl, boy and girl is left, you know, uncatered for, you know. And, and so that's, that's why we have so many problems today. It, it's as if, you know, the girls are totally lost, you know. Even in the entertainment industry, we used to have a lot of um, guy, you know, artists and all that. But today we seem not to have them, you know, they're they are really not there. And the truth is, if we really look at them, they, they, they are there, but they do not have the finance, the capital to push their talent forward. You know, that um, the money needed, the, the necessary fund that is needed to, to push their talent forward is non-existent, you know. It's not existing because um, the people really don't have, you know, and even the little they have, you know, there's, there's just so much to, to cater for and nobody really would want to, you know, risk his little funds, you know, you know, pushing a cousin or a nephew or a niece that believes that he or she is going to break through, you know, through um, entertainment and arts. You know, so there's, there's, there's been a lot of problems that the guy people are faced with. And how how do we solve this um, you know this problems? I think one of the one of the ways we can solve it is education. You know, we, we, um, knowledge is power. An average girl, boy, and girl needs to be empowered with knowledge, the proper knowledge. You know, not just in the ability to read and write. You know, um, they need to be mentored. We need mentors. You know, to to step into the arena. And take these boys and girls and, and, and coach them and tutor them, you know, give them some sort of tuition on how they can, you know, do the very little things that can, you know, push them out there. I'm also thinking that one of the things, uh, one of the ways that, you know, this whole issue can be sorted out is uh, having um, reading clubs, you know, all across um, the municipalities. We could have reading clubs where we could have, um, Teenagers, you know, form a group of 15, 20 people, come together and read all the time. Then we could have, um, you know, personalities, important personalities who come from time to time and have reading sessions with these kids, you know. There's a lot that can be done. We could have um, some sort of um, sponsorship program where one, one person sponsors a child in terms of, okay, if you want to be a boxer, I'm going to take care of your transport. I'm going to take care of um, your multivitamin. I'm going to see to it that your feet, I'm going to get you, um, you know, your, your shield, your gloves and all that. And I'm always going to be there to, you know, always, you know, cheer you on, give you the necessary psychological, you know, um, empowerment. You know, these are things that I think the girl, um, um, boy and girl, you know, Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Vice President. Uh, we know Africa is a very, very difficult uh, continent to live in. Uh, our God people, uh, I hope you all are listening to our Vice President and uh, our Deputy President, uh, because uh, education is very, very important. Uh, you must not be a, a university graduate uh, you must not be a professor, but there are some sort of education uh, you can acquire from life, you know, uh, which is experience, you know, because every child wants to be more better than his, uh, his own parents. That is why it's very, very important. The parents have to give, uh, uh, let me say, just show them the path of life, you know, the way they can go, how they can be able to improve their life and they do everything for them to make sure uh, they have a, a very easier life than their parents. And uh, one of them is education, you know? And then the second is advice, you know? Because edu without education is very, very difficult. Even our forefathers, our grand -grand great grandfathers, they were also educated. You know, even some of them travel as far as to Portugal to, to get educated. You know, it's not just only Western education, because if you also look at America today, 
Uh, we also have this situation where our, our brothers and sisters in America are also having the same problem, not educated, uh, getting pregnant uh, very young. And uh, this, this is a very, very big problem. The government has to do a lot. And uh, the, peop the GAR people also, the GAR kings, they also have to come to the rescue of these people. You know? Even though it's elementary school, then uh, what Nigeria called the secondary school before, you know, this is very, very important because once you can be able to sponsor somebody, uh, education, you have given that person uh, part of his life, you know, you have shown him the part of life he should follow. So that is very, very important. And sport is also very, very important as the vice president also said, because uh, we can see to some children here, even in Europe who are not good in school, but with sport, they, they can be able to go far in life, you know? Because if you look at the Olympic, which uh, just ended, most of these athletes who represent this country, Austria and the Germany, they are not graduates. You know? They only have the normal school everybody's having. You know? but sport, they also have a perspective, you know, how to go in life. So thank you, Mr. Uh, President, uh, Vice President. I hope our our deputy president can be able to contribute more because uh, myself, I'm not at all familiar with uh, Ghana, the issue of Ghana. The only thing I know is what I read from the newspaper and uh, sometimes from both of you. So, Ma, can you continue a little bit? Can you elaborate on the GAP people? And a, little bit, a little bit of their history and uh, so that we know, so that our viewer, viewer knows uh, Okay. Um, well, I think the vice president is well invested in the knowledge of the GAP people. Okay. And all, all I want to say is that our culture is one of the strong pillars in which our nations evolved. So when we are trying to develop the nation, we shouldn't let go of such an important thing like our culture. Yes. We shouldn't let, we shouldn't forget where we come from. We shouldn't forget that. So I think that Mr. Vice President has said it all. Thank you. Okay, thank you too. So, yes, uh, our PRO is already waiting. Uh, let's also give him a voice. Uh, so, uh, PRO, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the privilege of giving me. I want to firstly apologize for coming late. Okay. I was actually going to come call. I haven't said that uh, I want to appreciate the Vice President and the Deputy President for the information. You have rightly said, uh, I also did not uh, know about Canada, uh, but I believe this uh, platform will give us all the privilege to get to know more about ourselves, our people, the culture that binds us all together. And at the same time, I want to say that uh, in respect to what the deputy president rightly said, the culture have a very big role to play in the development of any socio-cultural organization because we are culture, we get to know who we are by way of uh, what makes us what we are and all of that in relation to, to our practices, style of life, style of dress, uh, our language, and our food and all of this gives us the true identity of who and where we belong. So I believe uh, if, as we frequently come out to enlighten our people and share with them how relevant it is for, for people to have done and uphold their culture, I believe that we go a long way to, to edify our people. 
Yeah, thank you, Honorable Piero. Uh, yes, there's, there's the, the needs in, in Nigeria and the, the GA, they have a common uh, history, uh, like that of uh, land grabbing, uh, to, to say the fact. We are also experiencing this in Nigeria uh, from the, uh, let me say, the Edo part of Nigeria. And the GA people, they also have a, a very, very, uh, let me say, a common history with the, the Edo people, because these are Edo's, although their language is a little bit different from the Edo we are speaking today in, in Nigeria, uh, this uh, ancestral lineage with both of them. And if you can see what is happening in Benin today and uh, what I'm hearing that is also happening in Ghana, we know these people are really Benin. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's, we have more in common. And uh, although in Benin, uh, in, in Edo state, in Nigeria, uh, we have less, uh, uh, uneducated people than uh, in, in Ghana, as we can say, because Nigeria uh, government invested heavily in educating our people. And I, I believe the Ghanaians, the Ghana government can also do the same because uh, if you have a free education and uh, where uh, everybody can afford to go to school, I think there's no reason that uh, anybody who wants to go to school we say, I'm not going to school. This is very, very important for Africa as a whole. Because uh, in Africa, we have people with less privilege who cannot afford to buy a textbook or any mathematical set. You know? So this is very, very important for our government to come to the aid of the Ghana people. Because I believe with education, they can be able to improve Ghana, the quality of life in Ghana as a whole. You know? because uh, no child should be left alone you know, without education. And uh, everybody must be carried along, no matter how rich that person is or how poor that person is. You know. But the proper education uh, always comes from the parents at home. You know. If you don't neglect your children, nobody will neglect them. You know. So, And if you neglect your children, nobody will take care of them. Nobody will give them the advice of their life. So that's why it is very, very important for the car people to step up their, their effort to bring their children to school and they school their children. And if, they, if it is sport, this is also very, very important. You know? It doesn't mean you are doing the sport, you cannot be a criminal. You know? So this is very, very important that somebody who will serve as a mentor to these people will be there to educate these people. Because we also have this problem in Europe. We, it's everywhere in the world, but uh, with proper care, we can be able to uh, solve this problem. So thank you, everyone. And uh, Mr. Brett, Vice President, do you still want to add to it a little bit? Um, um, sir. Unmute your mic, sir. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no so basically, I just I just wanted to add that um, we we should begin to engage, you know, traditional um, rulers, um, yes. you know, the clans in, in the greater Akbar region, and as an organization, we, we we should you know begin to look at how we can partner them, and even if it's to you know organize. Um, some sort of mentorship, um, you know, programs. Maybe um, every quarter of the year, you know, bringing um, resource persons from from Nigeria, from Europe, from anywhere. You know, just have these people, you know, come and talk to these kids, inspire them. We, we've got wonderful resource persons too in Ghana. You know, and we could, um, you know, engage engage their services too, just to make sure. Um, you know, when every other um, ethnic group of Benin descent is, is making progress, we don't leave our gang brothers and sisters behind. You know, we need to carry everybody along and um, also help to showcase their talent, you know, to the world, you know. And, and I think it's our, it's our responsibility as um, brothers and sisters to, you know, look out for our Ghanaian um, brothers, our gang brothers, our ever brothers and sisters, you know, 
that responsibility as um, as a people to look out for um, our people, look out for their their progress, and and help them, you know, write their success story. You know, I I just believe that is one of the things we can do as an organization. You know. In, in, in complementing so that we can help complement, we can complement the efforts of, of um, the political class also, Mr. President. Th thank you very much, Vice President. Yes, uh, the Bini Empire Advancement League, uh, as we said before, uh, will be doing his possible best to assist uh, any, any of our traditional rulers in, in, in the Gar region uh, to do all that would be possible for us to do to, to help. Uh, as, you, as we all know, this organization is very, very new. And uh, we also have uh, some challenges we are also facing as an organization, but uh, not uh, withstanding, we are still going to uh, be going to our kings in the Gaia region. And uh, I believe we are also going to do our part to make sure the people, the Gar people also have the best education uh, they could have. And uh, yes, I, we cannot promise yet. It depends on the, uh, the financial aspect of it also, but we are going to be partnering with the, with the, with the Gar Kings and uh, also some part of the, let me say Ministry of Education. I don't know if they have a Ministry of Education there or the, the local government there also to see what we can yeah. do yeah. or yeah. what other outsiders can do to help the Gap people. Because this is very, very important uh, because the Benis, the Benis always said in the family, where one person is rich, uh, the family is still in poverty. So uh, I'm appealing to the, to the other part of the Bini empire, like the Airways and the, or the funds to also come to the aid of the Gap people because this is very, very important because we all are brothers and sisters from the Bini Empire. So thank you very much. And I hope we can be able to help the, the Gap people to, to make sure these problems is solved because uh, being a parent or being a, a mother or a father at, at, at a young age is very, very challenging. And uh, we know this in America because most of our people there are having the same problem. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope by next week, Sunday, we can be able to deliberate more and uh, we maybe we, we also have uh, some good news for you, how far we can go. So thank you very much. Guys. So Mr. Pierre Rosa, you said you, uh, today we have a, a little bit of history. So, if you <laughs> can come up, sir. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try as possible to be brief. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, like I said, uh, we, I will be delivering a little bit of history that uh, pertains to the, the, the creation, rather how a village in Benin called Eka was found, was founded. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you could remember last time I I talked about how the the Sehure title was created in Benin Kingdom. Yes sir. And, uh, to enable me uh, explain that in details I had to to give uh, a, a very good analysis of certain individuals and people which form the base of my, my last uh, conversation. Uh, in regards to that, there's still going to be a link to that aspect. You recall, I mentioned that certain individuals came alongside with Romia from Ife on his uh, coming to Benin. 
And at that time, like I mentioned last time, Ihama was among those that came with him. I, I did not really mention that day. I actually forgot that Iyama was the leader of that group that came with him. And why was he the leader? I am going to use this privilege to state that Yama was the leader, the head among those people that came because he was choosing to be the head by the oracle. There is a particular staff also given to him. Virtually all of them had the staff for various serving various purposes for various offices. But Iyama, as a member of the of uh, Oba's family from the Ogiso line of uh, Ikaladeiran, which was also raised in Ife there, became the head of the Oba's family, known as the Odionwe of Yope. Traditionally, the Oba is from the household of the Yope family, for which Iyama is the Odionwe of the Yope family. In Benin Kingdom, Odionwe in time past were choosing among the, the elders, the four elders. And the, the oldest among the four elders were usually chosen as the head. And oftentimes, the head, the Odeon were, were usually too old to preside over meetings. And as a result of that, he often delegates the presiding power to his messenger, known as the Okaigeri, who is the leader of the youth movement, to carry his message and wishes. And as such, the much younger person were often nominated as Okaigeri to represent Odiowere. But these days, things are now varies how Odiowere are chosen. For example, there are some families in Benin Kingdom that have Odionwere, which we often refer to as Okaike, meaning the head of the family. In some families, especially families that are not related to the, to the royal families, they often choose, as it was in the old time, the oldest born male child to be the head of the family. Or the families mostly that are related to the royal family like the Iyogwe family, their own, own pattern varies. Sometimes one could be lucky to be the most senior, but often it is that among the elders, you, one must first of all be initiated to the elders forum and how one is being initiated to the elders forum determines how and who should become the head of the family irrespective of the age. So on this ground, age, uh, limitations or opportunities are not being used. Rather, the first to be to be initiated as a Dion, what, we, what is being referred to in English as an elder in the family. So how one, the first to be nominated as an elder usually becomes the next head of the family. 
if the head of the family dies. But in the case of Irobe family, it is an hereditary system. That's why often the Iyama of Yobe family, known as the Onjowere of Yobe, could necessarily be a young man. Reason because it is hereditary. So I won't explain that. I am going to go straight proper to the creation, or rather how a village was founded. Like I said, Iyama was among those that came with Oromia, and he came alongside with a shrine called Esa. E-S-A, Esa. And that Esa happens to be the staff of authority that was given to him on his way to the name. This Esa automatically belongs to the Oba and becomes the shrine of the Oba, which gave Iyama the power and the right to hold that office of the priest of Esa. Remember I said last time, Iyama is the father of Isekwe. Yeah. His functions were much, and due to age and all that, that was why Isekwe was created. This Esa is a shrine that was majorly used for preparation of war. So before the Bini kingdom goes into any battle, any war battle, Esa shrine were one of the major shrines that were being consulted before they go into the war. And Iyama is the chief priest. Because the shrine was meant for consultation of war, a decision was reached to take it away from the palace area because of the aggression of the, of the shrine. They had to take it far from a place which is six kilometers away from the main city of Bini, where we now have or know as a Okay. At that time, the place was not called a It was still part, it was an asket of Bini. The palace stretches almost to that end, but it was far away, six kilometers. As such, because the shrine was taken to that location, the place became known as Ewesa. Ewesa meaning a Satan. So the shrine automatically gave name to that area. A Satan, a Wesa. The first Ohen of a Sashrine was the son of Iyama. After taking the shrine away from the palace to his present location of a the, the, the first priest that stayed there happens to be known as Agoba. Agoba happens to be its name, meaning Agoba, that you, are, you take care of the Oba, to guide the Oba. Agoba was his name. He became the first priest of Ohen Esa, Ohen Sa. Later on, 
before down after the birth of of a wife. One interesting thing about about a wesa, which is not a guy, is that when Elewa, the mother of Oba Ewai, comes from there, comes from that location, and Oba Ewai was also born in Ewesa. Reason because the Ohensa, Ohensa, the, the priest of that shrine who was situated there, happens to be the obstetrician that took care of Oba Ewai's uh, mother's pregnancy that eventually led to the birth of, of, of Oba Ewai. A, a native uh, obstetrician which uh, uh, is known in Mexico today, also as a gynecologist and all of that. So he was the native of tradition, the Ohensa, that took care of that pregnancy that produced Oba Ewai. And he was born in that location. When Oba Ewai was born in Benin, the obstetrician is known as Osiwu. Osiwu. So they make traditionally, locally, and all that. They have a way of practicing their whole ancient medicine. And also because in the history of medicine, medicine were practiced not scientifically. It was practiced spiritually as well until it came into a modern way of practice by uh, Egyptians actually started it. But the, 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 the man who is often referred to as the father of modern science, modern medicine is a hypocrite. But I'm not going to go into that. The Osiwu, which is the obstetrician, in Benin those days, also have a way of determining the future spiritually, have a way of determining the future of uh, any newborn baby. They could tell the destiny of the child. But everyone happens to be the third, the third uh, son of his father. When he was born, we know what happened. The Osiwu, which is the obstetrician, prophesied that Eba Ewai is born a king. Doubt brought about doubt in the kingdom. At how can he be born a king when he is the third child of the third son of his father? The Oba Ohen. Oba Ohen was the father of Oba Ewai. So the doubt came. How can he be born a king when he is the third son? At the end of the day, to be sure that the prophecy will come to pass, a tree, a particular tree, was uprooted, which is being, uh, 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 what was the name of this tree? Uh, is uh, 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 Uloko. Okay, Uloko. Okay. Uloko was uprooted from the palace and taken to what the Bini is called Umutete. Umutete means a hill, on top the hill. The tree was planted there and it was said that if the tree survived, 
before the sun grows up, then the sign that he will become a king will reflect and talks over Ey, who was by the name, his prince name was Prince Ogun. Thus became an Oba. As we speak, the tree is still there at Eka the date. Eka, the name was later changed from Ewesa to Eka in the modern day, in these modern days. And one interesting thing is that we know when his father died, his brother, elder brother, also died with, as a king without a son. There was two more in the land that him and his younger brother, who later became known as Oba Uwafiokun, had to run out of the land. But he sent the younger brother to come and spy if there is peace in the land so that they can return. But the brother came back, lied to the kingdom that old Prince Ogun had been devoured and eaten by a white animal. And as such, Uwafiokun was, his younger brother was coronated as Oba Uwafiokun. Having heard of this, the rest is history. He fought and killed his brother and he became an Oba. This brought about the fulfillment of the prophecy that he, his born, he was born a king. So, to date, as we speak, the Oensa in the Isa shrine in Eta village still maintain that lineage of Iyama from time immemorial, from the inception of the very first Yama that brought the Esa shrine from, from uh, uh, Ife alongside with uh, the Kaladera. The same way we have had the same line of uh, history of Obas from one, one offspring to another from the time of Oromia to date, that same way we have also had the Ehensa of a Sashrine in Eka. Esa happens to be one of the oldest shrine in the new kingdom. In some of the Ohens, in various shrines. The difference is that some of the Ohens are hereditary from father to son, while some are not. The reason some are not is because some of the shrine, like uh, Huae and some other shrine, the, 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 the shrine itself have to choose a priest that will worship and adore or uh, intercede on behalf of the shrine for the people. For example, whenever an ohen of any shrine that is of that category dies, there must be a sign that will be given to know if someone has been chosen or not. Not until that sign is given, the Oba could decide either the son of the late Oen continues 
or we have a, as they call it in Bini. There is a word for that. There is one who always go to the palace to see the the, the other. The, the ONs that usually do choose their own priest are the ONs who usually do not see the other because they had a vow. They were humans. Most of them were raped, existed during the time of uh, uh, Oba Ewai as well. They were his left turnout who assisted him, some of those magicians and others who assisted him. Okay. In a way, after taking the throne, some of them felt betrayed that he didn't meet up to the agreement they reached. They got hungry and vowed never to return to see him again. Some of them, like Ohwaya, turned to a river. Oriyama was the wife of Ohwaya. She became, she became a he. She wanted to turn to a river. She already started turning to a river, but the husband used his own mighty power to stop it. The water, that's why Ohwaya River is much larger than Orion. All that. So, so there were a whole lot of them like that. And as such, the dates they had to choose their next Ohen by themselves. How do they do that? A sign must be must be shown. They, they look like someone possessed. They begin to speak in various proverbs, in idioms and all of that, they prophesy. Not until they are taken to palace, those days, even today, to know what is wrong with them. I can give a testimony of, there's a particular one in my village, because my village, they have a wire there. There's a particular one who fell into this category. He was chosen by the gods as the next one. He will go to his place of work. If he opened his boss, his tools, will be seeing different things spiritually. We run away, we come to the village, they will tell him, the gods have chosen you. He said he will never be. He don't like it. Later, he became somewhat a prophet, he began to prophesy and say a lot of things. To the extent he was considered being mad, he was taken to the palace. The, the way the other put them to test, it was about Eridia uh, at that time. He dipped his hand in his pocket, held something, covered something to his hand, and said to the man, just measure what I am holding. The man said, you are, you are holding a key. The other said, that in Benin, they call it a symbol, or a symbol, or symbol, that is, they put him to test to see his prophetic uh, 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 ordination. To see, his, to check his prophecy, his prophetic uh, calling. He, he said, you are holding a king, your highness. You are holding a key, your highness. The Hobba said, the, the, the elders should go and ordain him that he's, he, he has guessed right. That was how he became the UN. But when he died, up to date, the gods have not chosen. Up to date. Nobody has actually 
submitted themselves spiritually to be called. Rather, a regent is being asked to take over the affair. That is the difference from the ONs that are hereditary. Some are hereditary, some are not. Some are being called by the shrine themselves by way of signs. What the Christians will refer to as signs and wonders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so by way of sign, you know that it's chosen. Whilst to some is directly hereditary, like that of uh, uh, the the influenza. So that is that for NASA. I think oh. I will hold it here. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we really enjoy your your history. And uh, yes, thank you. And uh, a message just come in from one of our fans here. Uh, they also enjoyed your, your history and uh, they enjoyed the whole show. So uh, is there anything we have to talk about today? Otherwise we have to call it today uh, so that but next I week. Know, I don't know about the, the uh, really much about the agenda. You are the you are the one moderating. So yes, uh, yes. If there's any message for our people, please don't hesitate. Yeah, uh, uh, I think, uh, okay. okay. Um, I wanted to say something. Uh, we lost a musical, um, a music icon. Icon. Um, the news came yesterday. Actually, someone contacted me and um, oh, asked, yes. "Have it or why for you?" Yes, yes, yes. I forget. Yes, I confirmed that, and I think um, it's a great loss. Yeah, uh, he died at the age of eighty. You know, and um, my mom was actually one of his, um, like a daughter. You know, so I've been trying mm -hmm. to see how I could, you know. Get in touch with him, you know, have some discussion. Wanted to know more about him, and so that we can have a particular broadcast dedicated to to him. To him, okay. He, he, he was a great son of the Bini Kingdom, and um, he did a lot for the people yeah. musically, and he will be greatly missed by every one of us. So I just said I should also um, inform us that um, our our father has sent to join our ancestors. Yes. He did that yesterday. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Vice President. Our condolence to, to the family of uh, Sir Dr. Professor Owaifo, if I should say so, because yeah. uh, he was, yeah, uh, he was not only good in music, was very, also very, very good in business and uh, also good in, uh, in our culture, you know, he respect our culture, our heritage a lot. I yeah, think yeah. he's one of the legend, a legend our uh, musicians of today look up to. So he was very, very good. Our uh, condolence to the family, to the wife, and to the entire Benin Empire, because uh, he was a great son of the Benin Empire. And, uh, uh, and again, in the whole of Nigeria, yeah. He is the most educated musician. Yes. He was not just a musician, he was also a sculptor. He was a writer, a professor in the department of art uh, and uh, fine art and applied art. And then applied art. He was a commissioner of art and culture. He also paints, he draws, he does everything relating to art. He does all of them and he's also an architect. Yeah. In fact, he has his own personal museum. Exactly. Him. And he designed his own building. I know his house, which is in uh, Joromi off uh, Kewan Road. His house, you will see the design which he did himself, aeroplane house design full aircraft the aircraft was not an old aircraft that he just put there and uh, turned it into a house yeah. it's an architectural
design that he did himself. I think uh, uh, I've forgotten the name of his uh, museum. Can't remember the name of his museum. Now, people go there a lot uh, often and then to see things for themselves and all that. Okay? I believe in his museum, he has also decorated uh, a, a lot of mini history by way of art and design. Yeah. He has depicted that. It's a very big uh, loss. For us, and uh, his music also paved way for a lot of mod uh, modern day musicians like uh, Guitar Boy, Jeremy, uh, and all of that. So, the great means uh, I joined the entire Venice worldwide to say rest well and the condolence to his family. Yeah. Before we go, uh, I wanted to say as some advice to our people, you know, uh, this advice is not just to the Benin's worldwide, but to entire Africans. Uh, we, we've got to a point whereby people no longer understand the root of Africa problem. You see, uh, everything happening today in Africa, as I am going to be generalizing it now, especially our Bini people, we need to understand this point that our traditional rulers are not in any way our problem. Exactly. Not until they understand this. But one of the reasons I, I, I came late was as it was a lot of the fact that some couple of friends they called me in into a group call, a group video call. This was the issue they also brought. Palace, traditional being the problem of our uh, <laughs> so it took me time to explain to them. You know, I, I had to leave them. They are still there. Uh, I have to tell them I have the meeting, I have to leave. So it took me time to explain to them, look, we have said this time to that number. The, the royal fathers, they have no wear in the government. Before the, 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 the pre-colonial era, era, the royal fathers were in charge of their various kingdoms, communities, and all of that and they were progress. But when the colonial system came, they destroyed our traditional institution and gave power to the politicians. You cannot imagine your traditional ruler is under local government and she takes the affair. Meanwhile, this is a traditional ruler that had all the powers. And they were able to bring development when they had the power. These days, the constitution alone that we operate give more power to the politicians who only come during election to kneel down for their traditional rulers for prayers. But after the election, they go back to disobey their orders on a constitutional ground that is not favorable to the people. At the end of the day, you say, Oba, Oba. Yeah. <laughs> Oba is not the one determining governmental affairs. They should understand that, that the system of governance in Africa today has changed. Power has long been taken from the traditional rulers to the politicians, which favors the British who masterminded the whole thing. It took me time to also explain to them that, look, to date, the head of government in Scotland is still the queen. Yes. She's still the head of government in England. She's still the head of government in Wales, the same in Northern Ireland. And she's also the head of government in Australia. 
Many of them don't even know that the Queen of England is the, is the Queen of Australia. Yeah. As far as Australia from United Kingdom. So Australia is still a, a part of United Kingdom because the Queen still rules over the Prime Minister in Australia. Now, they, they, they prepare this grant, maintain their own system where the Queen, the royal family, still control the, the, the various countries. But in our own case, no traditional ruler is the head of government. So why should we be blaming failure of politicians on the head of our royal fathers? It's wrong. There is no royal father in Africa. Okay. It's like we lost the contact to our PRO. Uh, Vice President, sir. If, hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, Mr. Can President, I, I can hear you. I can hear you now. Can okay. You. Yeah, can we can you hear you now. also. Let us make it brief, sir, so that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want them to understand that in Africa, there is no royal father that collect tax from the citizens. To date, every, uh, those who lived in the UK who work there, they know. The people still pay tax separate from the government tax you pay. But such does not exist in, in, in Africa. I wonder why our people will begin to, to say things they don't know. Some will say the Oba is drilling oil in a <laughs> in a in a those states. Which oil? People go on social media to to say to say different things, things that never existed. It is wrong. We should learn to to sustain our own and learn to understand the fact that our royal fathers are making efforts, but the politicians using the constitution badly skilled to rule the country to suppress them. That, that is just the problem we are having today. But we should learn to understand these basis that the traditional rulers are never a problem. They know the solution to our problem, but they are not giving the mandate to get the solution done. Okay. They have, our traditional rulers have become people with Yes, but without the means of putting the ideas into work. That is the problem. For example, we have a constitution that will enable the citizens to go against the decision of the, the traditional rulers. When we, uh, Mr. Vice President talked about land grabbing, the Land yeah. Use Act removed the power regarding to, to land. By so doing, whenever traditional rulers decide land dispute between communities on historic base, the, the aggrieved party will still take the matter to court against the judgment of the, the traditional rulers. And at the end of the day, traditional rulers will still be, be, be the one to be blamed ignorantly. Like you, we, 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 you lost me or I lost you, I don't know. Yeah, we are here. We are listening, sir. So. Okay. Yeah. Ignorantly, people will blame traditional rulers. They, 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 they are talking about land grabbing, the palace. I, there's a post that says uh, they want to take traditional over of need to court over land grabbing. As <laughs> over of Benin not make efforts, <laughs> even bringing out the, the jujus in the land to swear and use the governor to, to make a law that, that, that state punishment for, 
or offenders, still it is within our human character that out of selfishness and greed over the, the mindset of covetousness, we want to take that which belong to another. And at the end of the day, those in authority, especially the, the traditional rulers, will be blamed out of ignorance. The duty of the traditional rulers, according to the constitution, is to complement the effort of the existing government and not to become the government, which is against the way it was. Africa experienced more developmental progress at the time before the pre-colonial era. As at the time the, the, the colonials were coming to Africa, we had advanced. But today, I believe we would, we would have been more advanced than the way we are now, 10 times, if the powers of traditional rulers had not be, 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 be swept for, away from them. Thank you very much. I think let me stop here for now. Okay, you thank you, uh, Honorable PRO. Mr. Vice President, sir, you wanted to say something to give advice to our, our Benin people around the world. Uh, basically, what I just wanted to say was um, we should um, you know, learn to always respect um, traditional institutions and uh, not being um, carriers of rumors and um, well, we shouldn't find ourselves in, in the midst of people who want to always malign um, traditional institutions. You know? And for me, that's just it. We've had we've had so much already, and I think um, it is time for us to put an end to all this um, chaos. Yes, you know, um, organized chaos, and um, understand that um, there is um, the traditional law, there's the constitutional law. We should be prepared. So, um, basically, that that's just it, you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Honorable Vice President. Uh, our Deputy President, sir, uh, uh, do you have any advice for our GA people? Uh, GA people, you say, <laughs> but I also think uh, this has really led me to not think about themselves only, think of ways to enrich themselves, but they, they should think about the young and then the generations to come as well. Yeah, that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this oh, is a very, you. very powerful uh, words. Uh, yes, uh, as our PRO said, our traditional rulers, they are not in the government. And the, our traditional rulers, they're not the one uh, selling our land. These are our youth. They, come this, they call themselves youth. You know? These are the people who are supposed to be building this nation. Yeah. Because all the money they made from, from uh, land grabbing, selling our land, today you can't find any company they built with that, with that money. Self-aggrandizement. Yeah. You can't find any factory they built today with that money. Yeah. And uh, from there they should learn. If those land they were sold in, in Europe or in America, you will see how developed that area will be. So we should try to be thinking twice, not just think of today. We should start thinking of tomorrow. Then tomorrow, you know, people are already thinking of 100 years later to come in Europe, and we are still thinking of yesterday. OK, uh, sorry, <laughs> somebody is calling in. And uh, <laughs> I have to, let me just, uh, because normally nobody should have uh, called into this program. But we already have uh, our program today. Thank you, Honorable Vice President, uh, Vice President, uh, and the Deputy President, and the Honorable PRO. Thank you all for today's show. And it was amazing. Thank you for the good history and the good advice for our people. Okay, let us call it today. And uh, 
by next week, by Saturday, uh, I and the, the, the vice president will be also be coming out. We are going to have a, also another topic. And uh, on Sunday, we are also going to be coming out also. So uh, thank you very much and uh, stay tuned and uh, be with us. Okay, goodbye and uh, have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Okay.